It is time for us to get started this afternoon. Clint is leading our singing. Tom Bolin has our opening prayer. And Ryan has our dismissal prayer. I don't have any additions to those that, that are sick. Uh, so if you have any questions about any of these folks, you can let me know. Some I, I may have an update on. Um, appreciate everybody that uh, helped prepare food. We had an outstanding meal. Um, giveaway day is coming up on the 16th. The sign-up list is laying here. Uh, as I mentioned this morning, we need about 40 people to make that smooth. And I know there are, there are folks that have helped in the past that are not able to be here this year. So if you can help, we'll find you a job. It's not rocket science, as they say. We just need enough bodies to get people in here and get them out. Uh, along that line, if you have more stuff you want to give away, uh, cleaning closets, garage, whatever, uh, go ahead and bring that in. Uh, next Saturday morning at 9, everybody that can come and help, going to move it from the barns inside. So that's next Saturday at 9 o'clock, so please keep that uh, in mind. Uh, sign up list. I think there's still some hickory nuts out front that Ruth brought. If you want to take some of those, you are welcome to those. I think that's, I think that's everything. First, second, and fourth verse. Five hundred and forty eight. Sing the first, second, and fourth verse.
Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we come to you before your uh, throne of grace and mercy this afternoon, thanking you for another opportunity to worship, thanking you for the assembly that's gathered here in your name, and thankful for, uh, thanking you for <clears throat> uh, the blessing of, of uh, comfort and, and freedom to do, to do so. We pray that those freedoms will be protected um, from now on. Father, we're thankful for the great meal and great fellowship that we've had today, and uh, thankful for the work that goes on here at this congregation at Dayton. We look forward to our upcoming giveaway day that we may reach out to this community and and bless those that may need that may have needs uh, that we can fulfill. Uh, we're thankful for the reputation that we have as as being a a, a humble church that will. Uh, to help anyone that's in need, and uh, we pray that you would continue to give us strength and 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 wisdom when making decisions uh, to do certain things like this, and and that um, uh, the word of your son and the message of your son will be spread throughout this community. Well, we're thankful for the the leadership here and the ministry. Thank for Matthew and his uh, willingness to serve, and and for Claire and for their their service here. We're thankful for um, his uh, ability to stand before us and do a job like he has so far today and um, in a tough uh, situation sometimes when, when messages are difficult or when times are such that um, it's difficult to stand and, and say the right thing. We know that we can lean on the Word of God as, a, as the measure and it certainly did so this morning with the example of Nebuchadnezzar and, and uh, that the fact that you're in control. We pray that as this country makes a decision on, on earthly leadership that, that, um, that your will will be served um, by the decisions that are made. And we pray that as Christians we'll keep in mind that our, the commandment for us is to let our light shine uh, no matter who's in power and to, uh, to spread the gospel um, to those that are lost, we pray that we will will keep that uh, in the forefront of our of our thoughts. Bless those who are sick and not able to be with us. Bless those who are suffering uh, with a measure of comfort. Go with us as we continue in this afternoon uh, assembly and bless us uh, here today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And amen. Our invitation song will be number 876. We'll sing the first and the last verse. Before Matthew brings our lesson, we'll sing number 957. 957.
One of the things I think that is really difficult for us in life is to try to keep our, our priorities straight. The Bible teaches that we are to uh, love God, serve people, and use money. Love God, serve people, use money. If we're not real careful what we end up doing is using people, serving money, and neglecting God. And when you think about that challenge that we have to, to love the Lord our God, thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, uh, Matthew 22 and 37, I think that we, we constantly need you know, reminders to, to try to help us to do that. Uh, I, I've told the story a few times about uh, Tom Landry, who was a football coach for the Dallas Cowboys for many years. But in 1958, he was speaking to the boys at Baylor University. Uh, and someone had asked him about his success. And he said, uh, basically, I was not that successful until I got my priorities right. And he said, it's God first, family second, and then football. Well, that may not be all that it needed to be, but I think he probably made that point. But I, I wonder how many of those boys uh, really got that point uh, and gave themselves to it. Uh, we live in, in a society or, or a world where, where sports just seems to, to dominate the, the, the millions and billions, I guess, of dollars that are spent uh, on sporting uh, activities. And I think I said this to somebody this morning, if we could get just a little bit of that excitement towards God in the church that we have uh, towards a, a football game or even to a political race. And, and by the way, uh, publicly... I want to say Matthew did a great job with that this morning. I think we need that reminder. Uh, I was telling him that, you know, the one time that I remember somebody being really, really mad at me over something I preached was in an election year. I was not talking about the election in, in any way, but I mentioned something about abortion. And uh, one of the elders in this particular congregation, his wife and his son, uh, I'm glad they didn't have a weapon. <laughs> they were mad. And they were mad and they let me know it. You know, and I, I think, you know, how, how sad that is. Uh, it's sad that we have spiritual things being affected uh, by our uh, public leaders. Uh, and yet... Uh, you know, Matthew makes an excellent point because when you, you look at the leaders throughout the scriptures, not only Nebuchadnezzar, but we notice how, how God used some of the worst of people to do the very best of things. And one thing about Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he had his priorities all wrong. Uh, he wanted to be worshipped. He, he made this 90-foot statue and everybody... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and likely others refused to bow down and worship that. But later, God stepped in, and old Nebuchadnezzar uh, was much like an animal. He was kicked completely out, and he lived for a long time uh, eating the grass. But he finally came to himself, and he was restored back. Uh, I, I've often wondered, you know, how sincere was he? Will he be in heaven? We know that he made a change. He made a change uh, in uh, his attitude towards God. Uh, I don't know all that went along with that. I'm glad that God is the judge. But somebody as wicked that they even wanted to be worshipped. A lot of the Roman emperors, a few hundred years later than Nebuchadnezzar's time, they also uh, wanted uh, to be worshipped uh, and uh, had a... Uh, a law or a rule that they live by, and they just got rid of you. 
if you did not do exactly what they wanted you to do. Well, all of that, I think, ties together with the importance uh, of our priorities. Uh, in Matthew 6.33, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, uh, and all these things shall be added unto you. And if you back up there in Matthew 6, Jesus uh, was talking about worry uh, and anxiety and pointed out that you can't, uh, worrying doesn't help that at all. Uh, we know that, but we still worry sometimes, don't we? But he was talking about the basics of life, but food, clothing, and shelter. And he concludes with that thought there uh, in verse 33 and even in verse 34, he continues that idea. You know, um, God's going to take care of us. He's going to take care of us. But we have to, to recognize and understand that God expects us to put him first. We, we have a promise, and that promise... Now, he's not saying we'll have what we want. <laughs> he's not saying that you'll have steak or seafood or whatever you like the most. Uh, but we'll have what we need. Uh, and you remember, it, it wasn't it David that said, I, I've never seen God's people, uh, you know, not, not have... Uh, and we need to trust him in that. And uh, even in, in an election year, uh, we need to accept God's promises. Uh, we need to uh, try to the best of our ability to continue to put God first. And God will take care of those other things. And in the whole scheme of things, um, a lot of things that we are so worried about uh, will never happen anyway. Uh, and God is going to make sure that we have those things that, that are essential. In Matthew 19, in verse 16, you have the story of, of the rich young ruler. And, and you remember this is the young man that came to Jesus asking, you know, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus, knowing his heart, knowing his life, knew that he was very wealthy, and Jesus told him to go and, uh, and sell what he had and give it to the poor and then come follow him. Now, Jesus didn't tell everybody that, for there is no real sin in riches or wealth. The sin comes when it becomes too important to us. And that seems to have been the case here. It says that the young man uh, went away sorrowfully. Uh, I would like to think that he was a little bit like Naaman. You remember in 2 Kings 5, I guess it is, where Naaman was told to go and dip in the Jordan River seven times. And, and he basically said that water's dirty and it's nasty and it's muddy. There's a lot better waters. And why didn't the prophet do some great thing? But a servant pointed out to him that if it had been some great thing, he would have done it. Well, Naaman did exactly what the prophet had commanded, and his leprosy was cleansed. Uh, I'd like to think that this rich young ruler may, maybe did that as well. Uh, maybe he went home, maybe he talked to family, uh, and they pointed out to him that you know the, these riches were in no comparison in any way to being compared to being a faithful servant uh, of God. Amen. You remember that, that Jesus... You know, talked about this uh, when he says, you know, what, am, what is a man profited if you gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So we become, I think, so preoccupied with, with the flesh uh, and with the, our, our wants uh, far beyond our, our needs that we, we struggle to, to really uh, appreciate uh, the importance of the spirit and the soul. You see, the body only has value within the context of the spirit. Our spirit, our soul, that is what gives importance or value to this body. We use our bodies to develop the spirit and the soul. The spirit of the soul will live on throughout eternity as we use that expression. Uh, this old body, uh, it came from the dust, and it'll go back to the dust. Uh, Ecclesiastes 
chapter 12. So we have to be, I think, reminded of uh, those things. And quite often, uh, we need to be uh, reminded. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is, as, is answering a couple of questions. And uh, uh, he, he addresses both of those questions. Uh, early in the chapter, he's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. And the latter part of the chapter, uh, the, the final judgment and, and the destruction uh, of the world, as, as Peter said, all things will be burned up. Well, in answering uh, the question about the destruction of Jerusalem, now Jesus was, lived, was in his personal ministry from about uh, A.D. 30 to 33, somewhere in that area. Jerusalem was destroyed in A.D. 70 uh, by the Romans. And Jesus is talking to the people, and he basically says that, you know, uh, a, a lady, if she's outside, you don't even go back into the house to get anything. Uh, when this army is coming, this destruction is coming, you run. Uh, a fellow that's working out in the fields, he said, uh, you, you don't even go back for, for your cloak. They... Uh, would remove the outer garment uh, because it got in the way of doing the farm work. And uh, uh, you would lay it aside, and then when you finished, you'd go get it. He said, don't even go get it. You, you, you run. He talks about uh, a lady that, that is pregnant or uh, a young mother with, with a young child nursing, and he said, you know, pray, pray, pray don't ha happen when that is your case. If it's winter. He says, pray it doesn't happen in the wintertime because of the destruction. Well, we know from history that the Romans did come in A.D. 7 and over one million people lost their lives. One million. And Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. So uh, just a terrible situation. But if the body is that important, how much more important is the soul? What shall a man give? You know, so our bodies are important in light of a spirit or soul. The Bible tells us that. And that we are to care for ourselves and, and care for, for one another. We are to provide for our families. Uh, so, so the body is important. But we must recognize that the importance Importance is connected in such a way that you can't really separate that uh, from uh, the value uh, of the soul. So, first things first. You, you remember when Elisha went to the poor widow who just had a little bit of oil and a little bit of, of meal left? And he was instructed by God to, to go to her. and She met him right where the Lord said. And uh, he asked of her uh, something to eat. And uh, she said, all I've got is just this tiny amount. I was collecting sticks to build a fire. And I'm going to make a small cake. And my son and I are going to eat this. And then we're going to die. Well, Elijah makes a request. He said, if you'll first make me something to eat, uh, then... Uh, would take care of that. I, that. That took a lot of faith, didn't it? A lot of trust to do that, you know, to, to think, you know, <laughs> this is all I got. And not, not just her, but her son as well. Well, she did that. And then uh, the, the pot of oil never went dry. Uh, the bin with, with the meal, uh, it, it lasted. God took care of her. But she was to first do those things. As we mentioned in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, the kingdom, of course, is the church. Uh, in Matthew 16, 18, and 19, uh, Jesus talks about, you know, building his church and giving the keys of the kingdom to the apostles. So we know that the kingdom and the church are, are designations of, of the very same thing. So Jesus says, you know, put it first, even... In the context, even above what we eat, what we drink, what we wear, what kind of house uh, we live in. Uh, and that is something that, that is so vitally 
think, challenging. But throughout the scriptures, uh, when, you, when you look at, at the Apostle Paul uh, in, in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, he said, I do not count myself to be to have apprehended or to accomplished or to arrived, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forward to those things that are ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the hawk, uh, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul was basically saying, here is my priority. Here is what has to come first. In Philippians chapter 1, he said, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And it's interesting that Paul, uh, in that particular letter, noted that for him, he felt that it was better for him to die and go on to his reward. But for the Philippians... He said, it's more important that I stay. And in that, I think, he was noting that we have to have our priorities. What matters most? Uh, and loving God and serving people has to be up there. In fact, we remember in Matthew 25, beginning of verse 31, when Jesus talked about loving and serving God, he made it very plain that we do that through loving and serving one another. So it is our, our service. Uh, it, it's a giveaway day. Uh, it's a, a special contribution for flood victims or hurricane uh, victims. Uh, it, it's helping somebody out who have lost their possessions uh, in a fire. It, it's going by you know, the funeral home or the cemetery when a loved one has died and, and, and giving comfort, uh, maybe financially, but m maybe not at all, to put others before ourselves. It just seems to almost go, go against our um, very uh, being. Uh, who am I concerned most about? Many times that, that, that's me. And all that we see in these passages is that we have to overcome that. Uh, uh, Eric, I guess it was yesterday, Eric Owens, he talked about a, a family that was pleasing to God. And it, he made it very plain that, that a husband uh, is to be the head of the house. But what does that mean? That means that he puts everybody else before himself. He... he he puts his wife before himself. He puts his kids before himself. He has a responsibility to guide, direct, and provide for uh, that family. And, and, and that, that's this idea uh, of putting first things first. In Revelation chapter 2, the writer there talks about these seven churches of Asia. And he starts out with the church at Ephesus. And in each of these cases, with an exception or so, he, he talks about what was good in those churches. And uh, he praises the folks at Ephesus. But then he goes on to say, but you have left your first love. That there was something that was first. There was something that was a priority. It seems as if they were still doing a lot of good things, but maybe not doing them because they love God or maybe just not giving God the credit or not recognizing the, the, the sovereignty, the, the, the power, the greatness, the glory of God. But it was that love that had to come first. Uh, in Acts chapter 16, where... The Apostle Paul was, was preaching in Philippi. Uh, and you remember the, the story of the Philippian jailer. Uh, Paul was arrested. He and Silas were beaten without reason or cause. They were put into the prison, uh, locked down with, with chains and shackles. There was an earthquake at, at midnight, and the jailer thought all the uh, prisoners had escaped because the doors of the prison were open. He was going to take his own life, but Paul stopped him. And it's interesting that 
he evidently had heard enough or seen enough to know, to know the spirituality of Paul and Silas because he wanted to know what he needed to do to be saved. Uh, and Paul told him, uh, if you believe, you and your house, you can all be saved. Now, some have taken that and tried to use that to show that, that all you have to do is believe. The truth of the matter, as Paul goes on to teach him what he needs to believe, we find that he was baptized into Christ. But Paul gave that answer, no doubt, because belief has to come first. Baptism, repentance, worship, none of those things are going to come into the picture until I come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. So there, there's a priority. Uh, and it has to be that kind of a priority. Uh, I hope that, that not only do we recognize that and understand that, but that all of us will be active in trying to, to help others to understand that uh, as well. As we mentioned uh, in our announcements, uh, we on Wednesday nights are going to, to have two new classes. And the thinking behind that is that uh, we need to impress upon one another the importance of studying God's Word. It's, it's got to be up there it, in showing our love and, and our respect and our honor for God cannot be separated uh, from our love and respect uh, of God's Word. So I hope that, that not only will each of us make a greater resolve to be here for every service, but we'll use this opportunity on Wednesday nights to encourage folks that are only here on Sunday mornings. And we have a lot of those folks, and maybe that has been your history as well. God loves us. That is seen, you know, from the beginning of Genesis 1 and the creation to Revelation 22. And we need to respond to that love. We need to respond to, to all the blessings that, that God has offered to us. You uh, may remember me using the illustration about Benjamin Franklin. When he was just a, a young boy, uh, a man was visiting in their home, and before he left, he gave Benjamin a few coins that he had in his pocket. And later... Benjamin met up with a, a boy that had a whistle. And he wanted that whistle, so he gave the money to the boy for the whistle. And he blew it and blew it and blew it. And he, and he was so happy with it until somebody pointed out that he'd paid way too much for his whistle. And he could have had a whole pocket full of whistles for that change. Well, he no longer enjoyed that whistle. And later in life, as an adult... He never forgot that lesson. And when he would meet up with somebody that would sacrifice their morals for political gain, when someone was serving themselves as a government official rather than serving the people, he was known many times to say he's paying too much for his whistle. You know, life is important. Uh, recreation is important. Uh, ball games and other things that they have a, a place and, and they can be a, a, a very good thing if kept in their place our homes we need a roof over our heads but we have to realize that you know we can't put all that we are into those things Matthew six nineteen, Jesus said lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth he says, uh, bugs will eat it, it'll rust, somebody can break through and steal it. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So, whatever you and I have that moths might eat, whatever you and I have that might rust, most of our cars and those types of things, or something that a thief could steal, when you look at that category, how important are those things to me. How important are those things? Laying up treasures in heaven is done by service 
to our fellow man. Uh, a meal, a cup of water, clothing, shelter, and on and on we could go. So we need to make sure that we are keeping our priorities straight. It begins by believing in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, responding to that belief by repenting and being baptized into Christ. And the will is to confess our belief in Christ. And that is not only done verbally, but it's also done by our actions, living with God first in our lives. And if we're not doing that, I pray this afternoon that, that none of us would leave here without being faithful in Christ. Not perfect, but faithful. And having a resolve or an aim to do right and to do better. If you need to respond, the invitation is yours as we stand and sing. Anybody else? Yeah, just sit down, please. Number 300. 300 will sing the first and the third verse. bow together. Our Father, we are again thankful for another Lord's Day, the first day of the week when we can assemble together. And as Regina partakes of the Lord's Supper, we pray, Father, that you will bless her to look back to the cross, to consider the sacrifice of the bread representing the body of Christ, and realize that that was done for her as it was done for each and every one of us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let's bow again. Our Father, we are, again, very thankful for the blood of Christ that, that was shed. We pray, Father, that we 
as human beings with our limited ability can still focus back on that cross, the, the very cruel and terrible things that were, were done to our Lord, and to appreciate the fact that we were the ones that should have died uh, for our sins, but Christ stood in and gave his body and his precious blood for our sake. We pray, Father, as the juice is partaken of, that again, the thoughts of what it represents will, will be uh, in the mind. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Before our closing prayer, we'll sing number 730. <clears throat> bow together. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we're so thankful for another day that we've had to gather here to worship you, and we pray that our worship has been acceptable to you and been done in spirit and in truth. Father, we're so thankful for the lessons that we've heard today, and we pray that you will help us to keep them in mind as we go throughout the rest of this week, that we will apply them to our lives, that we will make sure our priorities are straight, and that we will make sure that we are always trying to serve you first, regardless of the outcomes of the election that we're facing. Father, we pray that you will Forgive us of our sins, and we're very thankful for the gift of your son, the sacrifice that he made for us, and it's through his name that we pray. Amen.